Hello everybody, welcome to this video. And if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering a little bit about what happens when we die. We did a video and I'll have a little link to it up here. We talked about why we have to die. Um, just a small little recap. We die because it's part of God's plan for us. Think of it as like a round trip ticket to returning back to God's presence. We believe we live with God as spirits before we came to this earth came to this earth to gain a mortal body and gain experience, and then when we die, we go back and return home. Um, but I want to talk a little bit today about what actually happens when we die and where we go. I think that's a question that a lot of people have. And the Book of Mormon, um, I guess you can see right here, I'll be reading from the Book of Mormon and a little bit of the Bible um, and some other scriptures to help us answer that question of where we go when we die. Now, there's a prophet in the Book of Mormon named Alma, who was talking to his son about this principle. And again, the Book of Mormon contains records and writings from prophets on the American continent. One of those scriptures says, I would inquire what becometh of the souls of men from the time of death to the time appointed for the resurrection. So he wanted to know what happened when people died and before they were resurrected. And we'll talk about the resurrection in our future video. Um, but we do believe that all men will be resurrected. And let me read to you what Alma said. He said, Concerning the state of the soul between death and resurrection, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. So everybody, when they die, they are returned to the presence of God. But he continues saying, And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of those who are righteous are, rece are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow. So who wants to go there? Like, that sounds nice. A state of happiness... You rest from your care, from your troubles, from your sorrow. Um, Alma continues saying, And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of the wicked, yea, those who are evil, for behold, they have no part nor portion of the Spirit of the Lord, for behold, they chose evil works rather than good. Therefore the spirit of the devil did enter into them and take possession of their house, and these shall be cast into outer darkness, there shall be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. And this because of their own iniquity being led captive by the will of the devil. Again, this paradise or outer darkness is only a temporary state between our death and our resurrection. Um, so the question would be, in that time between death and resurrection, like what are we doing? Um, we know we're either in paradise or we're in outer darkness, but what's going on? Um, let's think of Christ what happened between his death and his resurrection and as we learn of that it'll help us understand what we'll be doing now in 1st Peter chapter 3 verse 18 it talks about Christ and when he um, visited let me read it real quick it says um, he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison now one of the modern day Modern day prophets in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, his name was Joseph F. Smith. He wondered about this verse, how it was possible that in that short um, period between Christ's death and resurrection, how was it possible that he visited the spirits in prison? And so, as he was reflecting on that, he basically had a vision open up in his mind and he recorded those words in Doctrine and Covenants, section 138. And this is fascinating. It's just really fascinating. Um, and he says that his ministry among those who were dead was limited to the brief time intervening between the crucifixion and his resurrection. And I wondered at the words of Peter, wherein he said that the Son of God preached unto the spirits in prison who sometimes were disobedient, how it was possible for him to preach to the spirits and perform the necessary labor among them in so short a time. So he's like, how did he do this? And as I wondered, my eyes were opened, and my understanding quickened, and I perceived that the Lord went, not in person, 
among the wicked and the disobedient who had rejected the truth to teach the gospel, excuse me, to teach them. So he didn't visit the wicked personally, but behold, from among the righteous, he organized his forces and appointed messengers clothed with power and authority and commissioned them to go forth and carry the light of the gospel to them that were in darkness, even to all the spirits of men. And thus was the gospel preached to the dead. So Christ, when he died, went to the spirit world, organized, basically worked for those who were righteous to teach gospel principles to those who were wicked. And the chosen messengers went forth to declare the acceptable day of the Lord and proclaim liberty to the captives who were bound even unto all who would repent of their sins and receive the gospel. So they were pre preaching this wonderful message of repentance and freedom if they would just change and come unto Christ. And it goes on a little bit further. This is some really interesting stuff. It says, Thus was the gospel preached to those who died in their sins without a knowledge of the truth or in transgression transgression having rejected the prophets so there's a lot of people who are in this this spirit prison there's people who didn't ever understand about Christ and know his gospel or those who um, re just flat out rejected and so they were all taught and what were they taught this is really interesting too they were taught faith in God repentance from sin vicarious baptism for the remission of sins the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormons, uh, we have temples in which we perform what's called baptisms for the dead. It's where I would go and be baptized vicariously or in place of someone who had died. And they have the opportunity to either accept or reject that ordinance on their behalf. And so those people who are in Spirit prison now, they're being taught that, hey, on earth, someone's going to enter a, bap uh, a temple and receive a baptism for you, on your behalf, and you have the ability to accept or reject that. Um, and just a couple more verses that are really interesting. And all other principles of the gospel that were necessary for them to know in order to qual that, qualify themselves, that they might be judged according to, the men, according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. And so it was made known among the dead, both small and great, the unrighteous as well as the faithful, that redemption had been wrought through the sacrifice of the Son of God upon the cross. So as they're being taught by these messengers, they're being taught that all this is possible because of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and the power of his redemption. Thus was it made known that our Redeemer spent his time during his sojourn in the world of spirits instructing and preparing the faithful spirits of the prophets who had testified of him in the flesh, that they might carry the message of redemption unto all the dead unto whom he could not go personally because of their rebellion and transgression, that they through the ministration of his servants might also hear his words. So how incredible is that? Where do we go when we die? Now we know through the Book of Mormon it's a companion to the Bible. We, we learn that Jesus, in the period between his death and resurrection, we learn that in the Bible he, he visited people in spirit prison. It's clarified in the Book of Mormon and Doctrine and Covenants that he actually organized, um, in those people, organized those who were in paradise to preach to those who were in spirit prison. Um, and they were taught principles of the gospel of faith, repentance and baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost that they could be cleansed from their sins if they accepted Jesus Christ. Something really fascinating, um, it goes on a little further in Doctrine and Covenants 138. It tells us who Jesus um, instructed and who those messengers were that carried forth the gospel. Um, let me just throw out a few of those names. Um, Adam was there. Mother Eve with many of her faithful daughters. Abel, the first martyr, and his brother Seth, who is in the express image of his father Adam, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, I, Isaiah was there, Ezekiel, Daniel, Elias, Malachi, all these great prophets 
were those who were in this paradise and were being given instructions on how to teach those who were in spirit prison. Okay, so guys, this video was to help you learn a little more about what happens when we die. If you have um, a desire to receive a copy of the Book of Mormon, there's just a link here in the bottom you can click. And again, there should be a little um, video right here of what we talked about before, why we die. And in one of our next videos, we'll talk a little bit more about what happens during the resurrection and what the resurrection is all about. Okay, we'll see you next time, guys.